Hello and welcome to this short video from SANS on numeric conversions from decimal, binary, and hexadecimal. This video is intended to help the first time student or be a refresher for someone who hasn't seen this material in a while, but it is not intended to be a replacement or a substitute for your SANS class materials. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to talk about decimal, which is a base 10 numbering system, and then talk about binary, which is a base 2 numbering system, and hexadecimal, which is base 16. Well, let's start with decimal as a good baseline for us. The reason we start with decimal is because that's what humans understand. From the beginning of time, humans, when they first started learning how to communicate with one another, they would use their fingers to represent numbers. And since we've got 10 fingers and 10 toes, it made sense that we have a base 10 numbering system. Now, I have a number up on the screen in blue that says 214. Why does that say 214 to us? Let's do some simple math from grade school. With decimal being a base 10, what we had are different positions where we could represent numeric values. And with those numeric values, we had the options of 0 through 9 for each one of those positions. And so with that base 10, let me go ahead and put a 10 right under the, the rightmost value, which is our lowest value. We go from low to high, from right to left. And so with the base being 10, in the first position on the right, it is the value of 10 raised to the power of 0. What is 10 raised to the power of 0? It's 1. Any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. And then let's shift over to the left. In the next position, the base is still 10, but this number we raise to the power of 1. What is 10 raised to the power of 1? Well, any number raised to the power of 1 is the original number. And then we shift left again. 10 now raised to the power of 2. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. So what I'm going to do is I'll take my original number, 214, and drop it down here. And we're just going to do some simple math. We are going to do 100 times 2, which is 200. Easy, sure. 10 times 1 is 10, and 1 times 4 is 4. If I add those together, I get 214, and congratulations, Doc, you have just converted decimal 214 into decimal 214. Yay, why did we do that? Because when we move over to binary, which is a base 2 numbering system, the math will be the same. All we do is change the base. All right, so let's move over to binary. Binary is base 2. Because computers don't have fingers and toes, they're not counting uh, 0 through 9. They have two states, plus, minus, on, off, 0, 1, so they only understand two different states, 0 and 1. So now, how do we represent numeric values using these two states of zeros and ones? So I have a byte of data here. It's 8 bits. Each bit is either going to be a 1 or a 0. And we're going to evaluate this binary byte and uh, evaluate what its decimal equivalent is. All right. Now, the same math applies as what we saw in decimal, but the base changes. So with a base 2, what we're going to see is, here's the base of 2, and just like we did with decimal, we raise 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. Any number raised to the power of uh, uh, 0 is 1. And then shift to the left, just like we did with decimal. But the base is 2. So 2 raised to the power of 1 is 2. Shift left. 2 raised to the power of 2 is 4. 
And then let's continue on. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. 2 to the power of 6 is, one, is 64. And 2 raised to the power of 7 is 128. Now let's go ahead and drop down the value just like we did before in decimal, but now with binary. So I've got this 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. And we're going to do the exact same math calculation as we did with decimal. So 1 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times 1 is 4. 8 times 0 is 0. 16 times 1 is 16. 32 times 0 is 0. 64 times 1 is 64. And 128 times 1 is 128. If we add all of these together, let's go ahead and take our calculator because I don't math very well. I always need a calculator. And so I take 128 plus 64 plus, I could add the zero, but it's not going to add anything to the value, so I'll skip that one. I'll do 16 plus zero plus four plus two equals, oh, it's the same decimal value, 214. Excellent. So what does that mean? Decimal 214 is equivalent to binary 11010110. Awesome. Now, there is a third numbering system we're going to talk about, hexadecimal. Hexadecimal was created mainly so that humans could understand those binary values better. So we can read them better. It takes up less space. Because while computers understand binary ones and zeros, it takes up a lot of space on our screens, and it's really hard for humans to read binary. So we created a base 16 numbering system. Problem. Zero through nine, we've got covered with decim uh, decimal characters, right? But there's only 10 of them. We need 16. So with hexadecimal, Zero through nine is covered, no problem. But wait a minute, when we get to 10, we have to find a character that represents the value of 10 that only takes up one space. And so A becomes 10, B becomes 11, C becomes 12, and all the way down to F becomes 15. So now we've got zero through 15, 16 different values. Let's evaluate this hexadecimal D6. And how do I know that it's hexadecimal? It's usually you will find hexadecimal characters starting with this 0x. 0x has no value to it. It just means what's coming next is a hexadecimal value. And so 16 is my base now. 16 raised to the power of 0 is 1. And then 16, we shift left, raised to the power of 1 is 16. So now I take this D6 and I bring this down. Wait a minute, we've got a problem here, this D. What's D times 16? I don't understand that. Oh, that's right. We've got this conversion chart that tells us D is equivalent to the decimal value 13. So let's substitute this D with 13. And then do the same mathematical calculations we did before. 16 times 13. Whoops, I need my calculator again. That's okay. Let's go ahead and do 13 times 16 equals 208. And then 1 times 6 is 6. 
I add 208 plus 6, and I get 214. So that concludes our tutorial on decimal, binary, and hexadecimal conversions. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.